In this screencast, we're going to be looking at how adding integral action as a negative feedback loop will affect your system. Now remember, um, what we're doing right now is we're assuming that our process is first order. So the process transfer function will look like this. And that we're also ignoring the dynamics of the actuator and the sensor. So if we take only the integral action part of the controller, which looks like this. So you have Kc over tau i times the integral of your error. Now this parameter tau i, it determines the strength of the integral action and is called the controller reset time or sometimes called the integral time. So ev evidently, integral action provides a corrective measure based on the time history of the error. Because of this, integral action is capable of eliminating offset, which is very important and is thus a critical component of feedback control. Now the transfer function for an integral only action controller, now of course you will never actually use a controller that's integral only, but the transfer function of just the integral part is equal to Kc over tau i times s, because the, tran the um, Laplace transformer of the integral would be one over s. So you have Kc over tau i times one over s, and then you divide e of t to the other side to get your transfer function. Okay, so there's your controller transfer function for your controller. Now remember your closed loop transfer function looks like this. And we ask ourselves then, how does that work out when we put in um, the definition of GC and of GP in this particular case? So this would be equal to Kc over tau i s that's our GC times GP, which would be KP over tau PS plus one. All of that divided by the exact same thing. All of that plus one. Now what we're going to do then is we're going to, to eliminate the denominators here that are part of the fractions of our numerator by moving them to the bottom. So we have then Kc times Kp over the product of these two multiplied onto the denominator. So that clears the first two fractions as well. And then they also multiply onto this plus one term. So you have tau is times tau ps plus one there in the denominator. Now, if we work that out, what that the polynomial there in the denominator is equal to, what we get is equal to Kc times Kp in the numerator, all divided by, and then multiplying this all out, what we get is tau i, tau p times s squared, plus tau i times s, plus Kc times Kp. So if we put this transfer function now into standard form, and to do that, we um, make sure that this term here, this constant term in the denominator is equal to one. So we are going to both multiply the numerator by one over KCKP and the denominator by one over KCKP. Then what we get is our transfer function, closed loop of, as a function of S in standard form is equal to, now we have just one in the numerator because we've divided by Kc, Kp in the numerator and we're gonna do the same thing in the denominator. So one over tau i, tau p divided by Kc, Kp times s squared plus tau i over Kc, Kp times s plus one. So there's our standard form. And what that means is if we compare that to a standard form for a second order system, which is equal to one over tau n closed loop squared s squared plus two tau n closed loop times zeta closed loop times s plus one. Sorry that I ran out of room there. If we compare that, this is in that form because you have a constant times s squared, a constant times s, plus one. 
then we can look at this and calculate what is our tau n closed loop. We can look at this and tell then what is our zeta closed loop. And thus, for this system, what we have is that we have our tau n is equal to the square root of tau i tau p over kc kp. And our zeta, oops, closed loop, tau n closed loop, zeta closed loop, is equal to 1 half the square root of tau i over tau p times kc times kp. And so those would be our two second order parameters that arise from adding integral control to a first order process. Now, there are three things to note about integral action. The first one is that the closed loop gain is equal to one. So here would be our, our closed loop gain up here. Now remember, for proportional only action, this closed loop gain was always less than one. But for integral action, when you put it into standard form and therefore you get the, the closed loop gain in the numerator, that's equal to one. So because the closed loop gain is equal to one, there is no offset at steady state. So this is the primary advantage of integral action, is that it, it eliminates offset. Now the order, overall order of the process is increased by one. Remember, we started with a first order process, and when we added integral action, we ended up with a second order process. The other thing to note is that as tau i is decreased, that is, the ag aggressiveness of integral action is increased, one gets faster dynamics at the expense of larger overshoots and more sustained oscillations. In other words, as we decrease this number here, zeta also becomes smaller, so you have faster dynamics, but you also start to get worse and worse oscillations.